congratulations on the movie, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, this was a story that I knew absolutely nothing about. So I wondered whether this was your entry point and what kind of made you both want to want to tell this story. Well, my entry point was reading um, a very early draft that Christy has written. So, yeah, my entry point was um, someone sent me Charles Graber's book, um, The Good Nurse, and I'd never heard of it. And I was totally shocked that America's most prolific serial killer was like in the hundreds, and that it happened in my lifetime. And that I'm, you know, quite a twisted, weird person that usually knows that stuff and has googled <laughs> it, and had never found anything out about it. And so that very much was a shock to me and made me want to read more. How did uh, when the two of you got together? How did the, your script, did your script change at all when oh, Thomas massively. came in? And did, did was it was your did you see it visually when you read it, or was it between the two of you that you managed to find the way? Because you shoot it in such a specific specific way. Well, reading the reading the um, the screenplay was was an invitation into Amy's life, and that was like what I took away from it was that if this story should be elevated to something else than just another serial killer movie it would be a portray of a true hero's life in all the details. Um, normally, I do not come up with visual concepts that early. Um, we'll be more in finding the truth in each scene. And, you know, there's a big difference between naturalism and, 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 and social realism. Social realism is a political thing where you kind of make a story about human beings being caught in economic classes. Uh, naturalism is about finding the truth out there. Instead of us going out proving to the world that we are right in the draft we've done, our job was to find the truth in Amy's life and how could, what was the reasons and how could she end up reminding a serial killer about his own humanity and getting him to confess. Um, that was the task ahead. I've been looking at this poster a lot because I've been reading and listening to Jessica and Eddie talk about how similar they are and like this Danish girl thing and everything else. This poster actually is almost like quite creepy because it morphs them, <laughs> morphs them together. When you had them two together, yeah. that must have made your job not just easier, but uh, again, as you say, elevated the, the thing you were trying to make by having these two wonderful performances. Clearly, when, when, when you're you know, working with these small details in naturalism, you know, you really need actors that could take the responsibility on their shoulders to tell this story. Um, not, nobody does that better than two of them. And on top of that, they're great people. So it was, even though it's an extremely scary and dark story, it was um, very life-giving to make it. Obviously, you did write it with them in mind because I know you've had a lot. It's been a long time since you first yeah, wrote it. Yeah, I mean, it, it was ten, 10 years ago, I think I was brought on to do it. But I, I mean, very early on when we'd had the conversation, I think they were always in your mind. They were always the sort of dream. Um, and so all, all the subsequent drafts, very much, you know, you were like, oh, I wonder if I'll ever get to see this. And will Jessica deliver this line and this and that? And then, you know, to be as lands them and directs them and it's amazing. And you're just very content as a writer, really. Yeah, and they've, played, they've both played like real life people before, mm -hmm. more recently. So did that help your process with them, given that, you know, even though they're playing completely different people than this, that they've done it before and they understand the importance of, you know, make, paying the right tributes to the real people? True, they, they already have a process of how to prepare for this, so I could ask them what they needed instead of me telling them what I needed. And, and, and that always gives a much better result and a better process um, altogether. I remember the, the, on the first day of shooting, we shot the opening shot of Eddie just standing there in the corner and the zoom in and all we wanted to do was to give the audience a reminder of the verdict where Paul Newman is by the pinball machine and slowly we zoom in on him and it's like saying look at this guy, look at this guy and you don't really know what the story is going to be about yet but the way Eddie was able to very very few movements to tell a full story about a human being blew me away and that was on day one so you know it was a great start. Yeah, I've been asking this to the filmmakers during the festival as we were doing this during the London Film Festival about cinema and obviously the British film industry is having a few issues and everything else and obviously you're doing this with Netflix. For you as a filmmaker and obviously you as a writer, you, you sometimes don't have a say over those things, but are you, do you think the cinema is in a good place? Do you think obviously post-pandemic that slowly things are coming back well, to what they were before? First of all, I'll say we always have a say, we can just not do the films. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it doesn't feel right, you, you, you're not forced to do it, right? Of course, yeah. Um, but you know, I think it's it's. I think that the the moments we share in the theater, in the darkness, in front of that big screen with stranger people, 
that you don't know and yet you're scared at the same time you cry at the same time it's very very intimate moments you share i miss those mm. and now after the pandemic it's great to be back and feel that at the same time um what uh netflix and and um and streamers are doing is that they're taking films from all over the world and sharing them out in the world i don't think there would be a distributor that would take in Korean or Chinese or Japanese films the way that Netflix does and show it to me in Denmark. So it both, it could be seen as a threat to theater. I'm not sure that it is, but it's also a great um, source of world cinema. Fingers crossed. Fingers Everything crossed. Comes back, yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for your time, guys. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Nice to speak to you. You as well. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!